Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Roblox Game Development. In today's episode, we're going to wire things up and actually get ourselves going to purchase an actual item in the Roblox store, catalog, whatever, using the Marketplace's prompt purchase uh, function. <laughs> uh, you could call it a function. So, as you can see in the Explorer, we've got three new things, replicated storage, server script service and server storage here's the problem with all of them I've not used them I don't know what they do and we're gonna pretend they don't exist today uh, so let's go to storage UI shop UI frame list page script so in this we have purchase alright so I was told that and I knew this a little bit already that the last two videos I haven't really explained what we were doing um, so I'm going to explain really, really quickly here. Um, in this load products, we're making a new variable to contain the button, like all the buttons you see on your GUI, instead of just indexing it with list I whatever uh, quotation marks. Instead of doing that every time, we're actually just making a variable of it. Um, and by doing this, it's just easier to get through. Uh, and then down here we're checking because um, if we go up to the Explorer, go to lighting and go to shop products, go to one, we now have this in-game variable which is a bool value meaning it can only be true or false um, and we added this title which is a string var value which means it can basically be anything you want. Um, in-game what we're using is if in-game then it's just going to do what it used to do. In-game means like it's only being bought in the game with in-game currency, but we're also going to be able to purchase things outside of the game, such as uh, my most sold item on Roblox, which I'll show you guys that right now. Um, what we're going to do in this episode, or maybe to next episode, um, is we're going to make it to where you can purchase my most sold item ever on Roblox. Uh, which actually has to do with an awesome movie. And to do this, I first want to show you guys something um, that I think is just awesome. Look at this, this background wallpaper that I have. Uh, this was made by, I believe, Max Graphics or something. Uh, there will be a link in the description to his channel. Uh, YouTube channel and he for free uh, made me this awesome uh, banner which is now my YouTube banner it's also my background on my Twitter page uh, at bballer13sn and, and I might put it on some other things but I do have it as my new wallpaper I love it it looks awesome um, he's got some fire explosions like plasma uh, then bballer13sn and my Roblox character, which by the way, guys, I don't change my Roblox character much. Like, I can't remember the last time I ch changed what my character looked like, intending to keep it that way uh, for a long time. This just, this is bballer13sn, and that's what I look like on Roblox, and that's what I'm going to look like for, like, ever, <laughs> probably. I don't see myself changing that for, um,. A very long time so that's my character and it's awesome please check him out check it out on my channel give me your thoughts in the comments below it's awesome right anyway so why did I do that because I'm going to launch Internet Explorer and uh, we're going to go to roblox.com I'm not going to log in as me because I don't really need to um, we're just I don't I just want to go through do they have a link? Pause that. Do they have a link to just get through this page? I'm not sure if they do. Um, slash user.aspx. I'm gonna guess that that's wrong. Uh, I'm looking at my second monitor to see what they do. Alright. So we're gonna go to the Gamer 101 real quick and then I'm gonna look up uh, my my user ID uh, 3276148 
And there's a reason I'm doing this, guys, and I'll show you guys that in a minute. 6148. Okay. Boom. Online Studio Roblox Game Development YouTube. That's actually correct. Um, we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to shirts. Oh, it's right there, actually. Boom. This is my most sold item on Roblox. It was not meant to be this price. This is insane pricing. I really don't like uh, the price floor Roblox has imposed upon the Roblox uh, economy. Uh, but I make it as cheap as I possibly can. Uh, I don't remember what the original price was. I think it was like one Robux or two Robux or like three tickets or something. Um, Anyway, this is my most sold item on Roblox. I keep back, like, sidetracking myself. Uh, this is my most sold item on Roblox, so this is what we're going to do it on. Alright, so back in here. So I explained this now a little bit, and next up I'll explain this. What we're doing is, if the product is in-game, meaning it's an in-game purchase, in-game currency, uh, it just does what we already had working. Else, in the case that it's not in-game, in the case that you are purchasing it with real Robux or real tickets, um, it's going to launch the prompt purchase, which is built into, well, Roblox's new marketplace service. And that allows you to actually buy real things in, well, the real digital items that are actually in the digital store on Roblox's catalog uh, from in-game. So how are we going to do this? Well, first you do game, get service, and we're going to make this a variable. So let's do marketplace equals game, get service, and I'll explain what this does in a second. Marketplace. All right, so a service can be seen as like a huge thing. Like, it can be seen as a whole bunch of extra functions all tied to like one object which everything in this explorer is an object and the service can be seen kind of as an invisible ghostly energy object um, with functions that access it, services are really really powerful tools they access things you normally couldn't access in just Lua uh, and then we're going to do marketplace, and we we put it into a variable just so we can keep track of it better. Marketplace prompt purchase, um, and where do we have the player? Okay, script. Yes. All right. So player, and then we're going to pass in the ID of what they purchase. So how do we do that? Um, actually. I didn't think that through yet. Um, we're going to have to add to this one. We're going to add an int value and we're going to call it catalog ID. Um, and we're going to go back to IE now. We're going to copy this number at the very end. You'll see the name of it with dashes and subspaces. Item, question mark, ID equals, and everything after that equals sign, this number here after the equals sign. That's the ID you want to pass in. So we'll throw it in this value for the catalog ID, um, which the catalog ID, by the way, is actually useless uh, most of the time. We're going to, we'll take care of that later. Uh, and then we're going to do item, or no, not item, what is it? Product dot catalog ID dot value. And what that'll do is it'll prompt the player, do you want to buy this? Are you sure it costs this much? And then they can actually purchase it. Um, yeah, good enough. <laughs> um, and I believe that's it, right? Yeah, but I'm going to do something kind of cool, and I'm going to increase their points um, if they purchase something with real currency, because... Let's face it, that's helpful to you. So I'm going to increase their points by like 10 or something. Well, this is kind of cheap, so actually 200. All right, there we go. Um, and now what we're going to do, as you guys know, this list 
Uh, one would be the first thing in the list. Two would be the second. So we're going to make two be our out-of-game purchase. Um, take out in-game. Catalog ID stays the same. So now in here we can change the catalog ID to zero because uh, we don't need it. Price, it's useless, so we change that to zero. I actually know it's not useless. Uh, how many Robux is it? Should be 10, right? Yeah, 10 Robux. The price is 10 Robux. Um, and the title is Hunger Games District 12 Uniform. Um, in game is false, and that should work. Let's try it. F7 and then Alt F7, and we will see how it works. Of course, it, it comes up with this. Uh, yeah, allow access. All right. So, now we're going to press Alt F7 to get ourselves a player going in here. I know it's been a long video, guys. I'm sorry. Um, I figured since I haven't made a video in so long, though, you guys wouldn't mind. So, let's go to shop. All right, there we go. We've got Hunger Games District 12 uniform, 10 Robux. Um, are we getting an error? I wonder. Marketplace. Okay. So the marketplace, we can't actually test it here, um, which stinks, but please feel free to come. I'm not asking for your Robux or your tickets, but it's the only way you can test this. I'm sorry. Um, I can't purchase this myself because, well, I don't, you can't buy something from yourself. Uh, but trust me, guys, this should work. Um, the, the logic is all right, and... I don't see anything that could go wrong. Um, but that happens a lot. That's usually when the most goes wrong. Ah. Uh, prompt purchase. So there you go. It'll it'll buy things for you. Uh, our GUI shop is done. I'm, I'm not going to take ideas for what to do next. I'm sorry. There's a reason, and that reason is because I got a really cool project idea I want to do with you guys that's super awesome. It'll take us a lot of episodes. Some of the episodes will probably be kind of long, um, but it'll be awesome. I also encourage you guys, watch my Java series if you want to learn how to make your very own games outside of the Roblox engine. It's our Java game development series. It's called, The series is called Make Games in Java. Uh, we're starting out with 2D games, but... I'm thinking maybe one day we could move into making 3D games. Not sure about that. I might do that in C Sharp instead because I'm much better in C Sharp than I am in Java now. But, um, I don't know. We'll look into it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like or the dislike button corresponding to how you felt about this video. And I will catch you later.